I hold live master classes where I answer questions from women on the motherhood journey and post clips on this YouTube channel. Click the link in the description below to join my email list to find out when they are. I would love to see you there. Today's question is kind of a long one, so hang in there with me. You mentioned repeatedly that we need to let go of attachment, but it, does it also mean that we should stop visualizing and daydreaming? Is manifestation purely the process of receiving intuitive hits in the void entirely without influencing the process through visualization? Or can manifestation where this meditative oneness with the flow of life as I experience it in the void work together with visualization? For example, listen to my intuition as well as imagining in the void that ideal family I am hoping to create with perhaps a number of children I long for, imagining their clothes, smiles, faces, etc. So uh, these are this is a great question that I really want to make sure that you're clear about. So the first part is the letting go of the attachment part. And letting go of attachment Attachment means to release the need for the baby to show up in order to make you happy and knowing that you can be happy regardless of the outcome because the baby is only an addition to your life. If you make the baby a condition to give meaning to your life, you will have a very hard time. And I'm going to say you will probably not be able to feel fulfilled until the baby comes. And that state of emptiness is going to perpetuate until you figure out how to create your bliss in the present moment without the baby. No relationship to another person, whether it's your baby or your partner, can fill you. It is not their responsibility. It is not your baby's responsibility. And you should not put that amount of pressure on the baby to make you happy. And so this is an inside job where you follow your bliss, you find out what makes you happy, what makes you joyous. In coming from that abundance, it is much easier to attract in the baby that you want because your baby is about love. It is the frequency of love and happiness and joy. And so if you are already in that state, it is a vibrational match to what you want and it will call, be called in much more easily. So regarding um, the visualization and whether or not it's an intuitive process or if it's a process that you need to actively uh, be engaged in. The reason why I recommend meditation as a way to manifest your baby is because manifestation is a tool to help you to be in the flow of life to release all of the noise that are like pebbles on your path that can trip you up. Because if you can release all of that, you can connect with your intuition, with your higher self, which are, who already knows what you want very, very clearly. And so your higher self is always guiding you to that ideal future that you want. The problem is that we all have uh, this negative self-talk in some form of, or another, whether it's self-generated or it's generated from outside external influences. And we have to learn how to let that go. And meditation to me is the um, quickest route to being able to clear your mind so that you just di connect directly with your intuition. When you can do that, then you get these intuitive hits to help you on your motherhood journey. And these intuitive hits can come in the form of knowing when to make love because you're going to, you're going to feel called to it. It's like, Oh, this is today's a great day, or I'm really feeling in the mood because you're, so you're so connected to your body and to your intuition and you're out of your head. Um, because, you know, a lot of people they're, they're using their uh, ovulation calendars or, um, something to uh, their OPKs, their uh, ovulation predictor kits to help them figure out when to make love. You know, your body knows when to make love. And so you want to be very in tune with your body's natural cycles. And so an intuitive hit can come in the form of knowing when to make love, when to move forward with fertility treatments, who you should work with to be your support team, who not to work with or be around because they're going to pull you off of your path more than benefits you. Um, 
Intuitive hits can also be how you should move through the day so that you're predominantly in a state of well-being. And that can come in in the form of it's time for a nap. It's time to go for a walk. They're often very simple, very subtle messages that you're being guided to. And they're usually so subtle that most people just ignore them. But it is these little moment to moment steps where you're taking care of yourself, where you're really nourishing yourself and aligning with your heart and um, your path that you need to be able to listen to them, even though they seem so minute and minuscule and they don't seem like they would make any difference at all. But when you string those along, it creates this entire um, this entire picture or it, it, it creates this path. It's, it's like the yellow brick road. It's, it's laying the brick one brick at a time and it's leading you towards your goal. And so you really need to be very connected with your intuition to be able to create this really easy flowing uh, journey to, to your baby. So you can, uh, you can absolutely visualize to complement the intuitive hits, absolutely. Whatever you're able to imagine you're in your mind with consistency and really believe it, it's something that you can manifest. So they're going to work hand in hand for most people. You want to be able to uh, be enough of an empty channel to receive the intuitive hits and just allow the images in meditation or outside of meditation to just come with come to you. The images of your family, of your baby, um, being in the park, being at the playground, being at the beach, wearing specific clothes. A lot of that will come to you just naturally and just pop up in your head spontaneously. And so those are fantastic. If those don't come up so naturally and it feels good for you to visualize that, go for it. I would suggest that you visualize uh, these either images, whether they're images or movies in environments that are actually real to you. So it would be like in your bedroom, uh, in your local park. So it becomes much more realistic because whatever is in your mind can be manifested in the physical world. And you have to believe that. And so the trick is to be consistent enough with using your imagination through visualization uh, so that you get to the point of believing in it and in knowing that it will come. And so in the beginning for a lot of people, it there's doubt and uncertainty of whether or not, you know, it can, it can happen. And then as they get more comfortable in um, doing the meditations and doing the visualizations, uh, they start shifting into more of a belief mindset. And when you, when you get into that, when you pivot more into that belief and that knowing state, that's when I uh, think, that's when the baby is going to come. We don't know when, we don't know how, and that's out of your control, but you can definitely influence the course of your future in, in that way uh, by, by actively visualizing. It just has to feel good to you. If it feels forced, don't do it until you feel like you're ready to. If you're never to the point of um, being ready to visualize, then, then don't visualize. But if it feels really good, it's like daydreaming. It, you know, when we daydream, it just feels delicious to be in that. And it should feel that way as well for you. And so don't force anything. Um, and if, if it comes up spontane spontaneously for you, you can also direct it within your meditation to become more vivid, uh, to become more realistic. And that's certainly within your power to be able to do.